right, shalom, shalom. My intent is not to make this long. My body is falling apart, falling apart. But uh, ask for your prayers for strength and healing. So I want to go into something briefly tonight. And um, I don't want to wrap this up. This shouldn't be that long. It should be a fairly quick lesson. <clears throat> so we'll uh, we'll go into it. Shalom, beloved. <clears throat> All right. Hey, Shalom, the beloved brother. Kabar Ayash serving Yahweh Shai. Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai Barakatha by Shimmer Kwakadash. And to all the beloved Akim and Akwaf. Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai Barakatha by Shimmer Kwakadash. <coughs> Just made a moderator. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dive into it. One moment, I'll give it another minute. Shalom, beloved. Amelia Tribe of Issachar. She follows the lessons of uh, GMS. <clears throat> All right, let's go here. Okay, let's do it. Shalom. Rock the Yahweh. Rock the Yahweh Shai. Rock the Yahweh. Rock the Yahweh Shai. Call him Laimla. Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem. Or Kadash. All praises be. To the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. And double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. <coughs> Coming back at you with another lesson. And I want to go into standing up for truth's sake. Standing up for truth's sake. <coughs> Many of you are, are aware of that bill passed by Canada. And I was looking up the bill and trying to go into some of the provisions where it's talking about banning the Bible being taught and read out loud. So I want to pull this bill up. I think it's bill 367 on hate speech. So I pulled it up and I want to read into some of this stuff here. And Canada and the United States are joined at the hip in terms of some of the policies and provisions that they follow. So I pulled up this, some information on this bill. <coughs> wow, this is very in interesting. All right, let me go into some of this. I'm not going to read all of it. But the bottom line is, the bill is targeting 
those that are teaching the Bible. Ultimately, that's who's in the crosshairs. So it says, a long, yeah, thank you. The bill C367. And I pulled up an article, and I will put the article in the description box. And it says, a long-awaited online harms bill propose higher sentences for spreading hate online. Now, when we study the Bible, there's an antagonist, the bad guy, the wicked, and a protagonist, the righteous, the good guy, Jacob, the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. <coughs> So the Bible is inherently a, a doctrine of division. It's inherently a doctrine of provision and exclusionary. So it's solely for salvation of the Lord's people, the Israelites. So the Bible automatically comes under attack. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. So the small hats are pushing these agendas. Amalek. It says once again, and this is the um, proposed bill 367, a long-awaited online harms bill proposes higher sentences for spreading hate online. The liberal government is proposing heavier sentences, new regulatory bodies, and changes to a number of laws in new legislation, in new legislation to tackle online abuse. So now you have what they're calling online bullying or hate speech or what they call highly sensitive topics that are being addressed. So the daughter, the daughter of Babylon has a cancel culture. You're canceled if you go against the grain or against the mainstream. Yep, he rules Four and twelve. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am come not to send peace, but a sword. Now, Yahweh is coming to bring judgment, yes. But also, when we read that scripture in context, it includes division. So the other nations are being carved out for judgment recompense or payback. This is why we got to know the Old Testament. The day of vengeance is in my heart. We can read that in Isaiah 63. So the context of that is division. When we read Matthew 24 and 30 on down and Matthew 25 and 30 on down. Luke 12, 50 and 51. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get that. <clears throat> Luke 12. <clears throat> the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 50. <clears throat> Luke 12 and 49. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? But I have chosen, but I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? So prophecy must be fulfilled, a straight and narrow gate, suffering for Israel's sake, 
becoming a sacrificial lamb for, for the nation of Israel. But we know that salvation starts with the elect. Luke 12 and 51. So through precepts, we get understanding. <clears throat> Luke 12 and 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. So the Bible inherently divides, separates, and conquers. So that white horse that's coming to crack the sky is Yahushai, coming on a chariot, a so-called UFO. So the Bible, by default, is going to come under attack, scrutiny, criticism, being deemed as an obsolete Bible or obsolete literature an outdated doctrine that has outlived itself according to the, the mindset of the mainstream. It's antiquated or outdated and does not keep pace with the new age, the new agenda, which is really not new at all. This new, new world order is an old idea, an ancient idea. Nimrod tried it under uh, ancient Babylon. So did Antiochus under the Greeks. So it's really not a new age idea at all. So this Bible wounds, it cuts, and it heals the elect that is being converted by the doctrine, becoming new creatures. The inward man is strengthening and changing every day and being renewed every day by the preaching and teaching of the word. Let's go here. Back to this article. The liberal government is proposing heavier sentences, new regulatory bodies, and changes to a number of laws and new legislation to tackle online abuse. The Online Harms Act Table Monday proposed to police seven categories of harmful, harmful content online. Those categories include content used to bully a child and content that encourage a child to harm themselves. They also include hate speech, content that incites violence, or terrorism, content that sex sexualizes children or victims of sexual violence, and sexual content that is posted without consent. Now, Deuteronomy 22, right off the bat, is going to come under attack. Deuteronomy 22. How many know what I'm talking about? I know you know. The uh, Grape Doctrine. The grape doctrine that's been broken down already. Deuteronomy 22. <clears throat> See? It incites violence or content that incites sexual violence. See? <clears throat> so automatically, De Deuteronomy 22, the, the grape doctrine. Yeah. <clears throat> Brother Wisdom, Brother Basic Wisdom, Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. <laughs> so these are counsels, secret counsels of the wicked that recognize What's happening in these last days? The Lord's elect waking up, prophesying the end and the destruction of Edom. <clears throat> Let's get that in Sirach. <clears throat> Sirach 28. If somebody can post it. <clears throat> Sirach 28. 
And let's get 17. And night through 19. So around 28, 17 through 19. <clears throat> and let's post Proverbs 18 and 13 as well. So this word cuts deep like a sword. So the heathen are raging like, like waves hitting the shore coming against the Lord's elect, against his people, against the sand of the sea, the children of Israel, which starts with the elect. <clears throat> Let's read this. See, they're going to come against this doctrine right here. Deuteronomy 22 and 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and be with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. <laughs> but if she's not betrothed to be, become somebody's wife, then that man would pay a dowry and would make her his wife if he takes it without consent and takes it by force. <clears throat> Let's read this. <clears throat> Brother Hebrews 4 and 12. Sirach 28 and 17. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. So this word is a weaponized sharp tongue or sharp sword. It breaks, the, it breaks the bones of the wicked. Remember, it made the Israelites become the valley of the dry bones. <coughs> the word rose up against Israel when we read 1 Ezra 1 and 24. So we became enemies of the Lord. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Hence the valley of the dry bones. Okay, he broke our backs. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. Beautiful. <clears throat> many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. So this doctrine is cutting deep to the heart, deep into the soul of the wicked and the rebellious house of Israel. See, let's go to Isaiah 49. <clears throat> Isaiah 49. See? Isaiah 49 and 1. Listen, O owls, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. Listen, O owls, unto me, and hearken, ye people from far. The Lord have called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother have he made mention of my name, and he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand have he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver have he hid me. So the Lord's men are a weapon a battle axe with razor sharp lips. The doctrine of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So this world is hurt. The rebels are hurt of Israel. And the, the government is implementing provisions against the Bible. Ultimately, but they won't come out direct and say it. They're moving like a serpent. But the wicked have been cut through the, down to the white meat, through their soul. See, Proverbs 18 and 13. He, Proverbs 18 and 13. Yeah, let's go ahead and read this one. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. The spirit wanted that to come out. 
So they're demonizing the doctrine without allowing it to take its course. <clears throat> but I want to get another one, a wounded spirit. Who can bear? <clears throat> one moment. Yep, and 14. Proverbs 18 and 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. So this Bible cuts down through your conscience, your soul, tells you you're going to get burned by fire if you're wicked and if you're an Israelite and don't repent. You can no longer be ratchet or raunchy. Women got to cover up now and be submissive to their husbands. Men must be men and can't sit back playing Nintendo or video games all day. You got to pull up your pants on your ass now and man up. Really, you need to be teaching. So this word convicts us in our spirit. Why you think they killed Stephen? <clears throat> because Stephen cut him with the word. Israelites have always resisted the Holy Spirit, the doctrine. <clears throat> Proverbs 1 and 20. <clears throat> Wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the opening of the gates. In the city, she uttered her words, saying, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? She crieth out in the streets. So remember that proposition by Canada. They want to arrest those that are reading out loud the Bible. Let me say that again. This proposition or the proposed Canadian bill, C-367, want to arrest those men reading the Bible out loud on the streets. Wisdom crieth out in the chief plates of concourse, on the streets. <clears throat> but that's written in our law to do that. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. See, so you got to be a man in this faith. Gird up thy loins like a man. But a lot of Jakes are comfortable being a limp noodle. They're comfortable with that. I'm going to just be a ramen limp noodle, the way Big Mama told me to be. Well, that means you're going to be boiled up into a hot, molten, liquidated man come judgment day. Yep. Yeah, beautiful. Brother Gabar Ayash, Song of Solomon 3 and 2. Well, I haven't read this one in a while. Song of Solomon 3 and 2. I will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the broad ways. I will seek him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchmen that go about the city found me to whom I said, saw ye him whom my soul loveth. So we cannot hide this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. For you Jake saying, you don't have to exhibit the light if you have it. What man is going to put a torch underneath a bushel so that you can set your bed on fire or your tent? It's not going to happen. The light goes up on top or out where it can be seen. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to teach the word. The instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, reprove, correct, teach. Yep. 
Brethren, Gabar, Ayash, Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. I mean to remember when I was out teaching and this Eve came up to me talking about why are you out here yelling at people? I said, you need to go on about your business if you don't want to hear the word. So she was like, I'm going to call the police. Our, a lot of our women, they don't see us as an authority figure. But when they go to work or around their co-workers, they're showing all their teeth and smiling, very submissive and docile, giggling, you know, act, acting sweet and innocent, like, <laughs> you know, doing this. You, yeah, you remember that? Yeah. So I rebuked her and cursed her. But I found out later she was an undercover detective. I learned that later. I have not seen that woman in the neighborhood since that, since that time. But I put up a spiritual curse against her. She had on these coochie cutting tights where if she would have broke wind or passed gas, she probably wouldn't have got, got, gotten a brain aneurysm. But nevertheless, I put up a curse on her in the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And I haven't seen that blonde hair wearing wig Eve any more around the neighborhood after that. And I found out later she was an undercover detective wearing coochie cutting tights. Okay? And a lot of our women are doing these things out of order unless it comes down to their slave master. Then they become a good girl, a good girl, submissive and docile, giggling and smiling and stuff. The Lord sees you and your hypocrisy. And when you come home to your husband, you the devil. The Lord sees you and knows all things. But I haven't seen that wig wearing devil since that time. When I rebuked her in the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yeah, tight so tight if she fart, she'll get a brain aneurysm. The Lord is against you wearing these coochie cutting tights. Let's go here. Brother um, Mashiach Arazakah, yep, second Ezra 15 and 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I, I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So when you see in us, you just see flesh and blood. What you're missing, though, is there's a strong spirit on a man that will risk his life to go out on the streets and teach. There's a strong spirit on him to ignore danger, undercover cops, drive-bys, gangbangers, drug dealers, crackheads. You see? So you're missing that. You can't see the forest through the trees. The Lord has a high-level demon on you. I mean, you saw that video of that Jake hiding. It was on these, um, what's that, that app where they show a lot of uh, videos? Somebody help me out. Somebody put them on there, please. You can't see the obvious. So this is a spiritual phenomenon. It's not man-made. Second Ezra, world star, where this Jake was acting like a homeless man. And these four black men, so-called, went right by him with, with guns in their hands. He took off his shirt, laid down, and put his face in the corner, on, on the street corner, with his face right there at the corner of a building. And that see, that's a spiritual blindness going on there, where these four gunmen ran right by him. Second Ezra 15 and 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So these prophecies cannot be stopped. You cannot stop the will of the heavenly Father. It's not Gog and Magog, or Gog and Magog, which is Russia and the surrounding lands. Are they not waging nuclear war? Was that not prophesied? Am I lying? 
Was it not prophesied they're going to bring forth merging men with machine? The digitization, the brain chip. Is that not happening right now? So for you to see the prophecies unfold and still come against this Bible, that means you are on the level of a psychopathic, sociopathic, mentally deranged individual. You really need help. There's nothing to help you if you're that blind. Here it is. We're seeing upwards of 20 million illegal military aged fighting men cross the borders. And we're telling you Jacob's trouble is coming. But you want to argue against the Bible that warned you that all hell would break loose. Civil war, insurrections. Here it is, the FBI director said, all lights are flashing or blinking red. Alert, danger. The FBI director. Okay? So even if you ignore us now, it's obvious in your face, in the face, you're still coming against the Bible. So that Eve that came up to me yelling and screaming, I rebuked her in the name of Yahweh, Ahashem Yahabashai, Ahashem or Kwakandash. Never seen her face again after that. Here it is, upwards of 20 million foreign fighters, military aged men, have seeped across the border. We still have Jake talking about who wrote that book. That was written by man. What about the prophecies that are unfolding? Let's address the prophecies. Okay? Let's go here. So there's nothing we can do that can stop Bible prophecy. Brother Gabar Ayash, Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man, that he should repent. Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Lines up with Isaiah 55, verses 8 through 11, that my word shall not return unto me void. So the danger zone is emerging here. The FBI director himself, said that all warning indicating lights are blinking, flashing bright red. He said all danger signs are blinking red. In the, in the uh, military intelligence world, you have what's called a, um, a stoplight warning indicator chart. If it's green, everything is all good. If the bubble by that particular indicator is amber or yellow, then medium risk, but when it's red, alert. That means action is being taken. Like National Guard might be given a warning order or a warno. Be prepared to deploy overnight and lock down the city of the District of Columbia or whatever the case may be. But they're giving a warning order when the lights are blinking red. Be prepared to lock down Dallas. Okay, uh, listen, I'm not going to go into my background, okay? But for edification's sake, just listen to the Bible. The Bible is speaking. So only a fool would argue with the Bible at this time. Only a fool. Who wrote that book? Well, you're going to die, okay? Yeah, that's right, DEFCON levels. Here it is, the prophets warned you. The FBI now is telling you we're here. We're here. You got citizens talking about insurrections, insurgencies now. So the, the, the internet is used as a, as a net to, to capture these messages and texts, text messages and the sentiment or the atmospherics of the people, what they're saying, the phones, the video recording, everything, the videos like this, all goes into a vacuum to help spew out an analysis chart. But Jake's still playing games. Yup, beautiful. Brother Yahweh Shai, our savior. I love this scripture here. Psalm 60, so, 
Psalm 68 and 11. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. The scribes, the prophets. So the Lord's word is being proven true. We're at red DEFCON levels. Blinking red lights is what the FBI director said. But you ignored the men of the Lord because they don't look like your master. That's Jake for you. If they don't look like their master, Jake will just say, well, that's just an angry so-called black man. He's just angry. So uh, what about your slave master? So I guess he's angry too. Or maybe we should fire him for filing a false report or misinformation now. Your ways are not equal, Jake. But you say the most high's ways are not equal. I say the most high is right and you're bugged out. How about that? Brother Gambar Adama, Isaiah 8 and 22. And they shall look unto the earth and behold, trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish. And they shall be driven to darkness. So the Lord is going to put you in a sunken place. Judgments. Some by the, the teeth of wild, of wild beasts. Some by the edge of the sword, Gurkha troops, UN troops, hired mercenaries that could care less about your so-called constitution. What does a hired foreign fighter mercenary care about your U.S. constitution? Hey, look here, I have my rights. You think a foreign fighter that can barely speak English care about your provisions of your U.S. Constitutional codes, according to section 108, paragraph 5C, you're going to get a bullet right in between the eyes for being stupid. These men coming over here are hired to, for chaos so that the elite can bring order out of chaos. Man made chaos. Okay? Here it is. You're quoting the Constitution. Some of these, most of these people can barely put together a sentence in English. It's about to get real out here. Upwards of 20 million military age men. Reports in Chicago of rape of 14 year old girls, 12 year old girls, robbing the stores in New York, New York, Chicago, LA, New Orleans. Well, it's about to get real out here. Yup, Brother Gabar Ayash. Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So the war starts with words. Whenever you get ready to get into a fight, there is a cold war, a war of words. And I'll do this. You say one more thing. Do this one more again. I'll say that again about my mama. So right now, <coughs> the wicked global elite are trying to dominate the mainstream themes and messages but they're losing the information war. You see? So they're, they're embarrassed. Remember Proverbs 18 and 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. So when you've been cut through your soul, you're ready to take everybody out. You, you, everybody around you and yourself. You see? There is no more hope. A lot of Edomites do that when they lose on their investments. When I was in Miami, there was an Edomite in the neighborhood. He lost $150,000 in his investments and drank a big bottle of Johnny Walker with a whole bottle of uh, volume. No, I'm not encouraging that behavior. I discourage that behavior. That goes against the scriptures to do that, YouTube. But I'm just telling you what happened. So a wounded spirit, who can bear? 
brother said George Bush. George Bush said the Constitution is the goddamn, it's just a piece of paper. Yeah. Well, remember, even in, uh, when martial law is declared, they go under um, emergency laws under FEMA. So really, the Constitution is just going to be toilet paper, just like George Bush said. Toilet paper. Used to just rub your backside. <clears throat> okay? The government can seize your home, your car. If you got an emergency shelter, that's going to help house the troops. If you got food storage, guess what? That's soldier food storage. Or these mercenaries that's going to need a place to lay their head. Or if you got an SUV, that's a troop transport vehicle now. But I pay my taxes. Well, it doesn't matter, okay? Martial law has been declared. So now the troops got to eat, sleep, and they need transportation and gas ammunition. By the way, you got ammunition and guns. The soldiers got ammunition and guns. So they're going to be deboing your goods and services. Okay? Food, water, ammunition, fuel. They're going to just debo it. All right? That's my bike, fool. Okay? Let's get ready to close out. So this word is a weapon. A war of words. Let's go to Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29, verse 20. Let's go to 19. Isaiah 29 and 19. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. So this word breathes a breath of fresh air into the elect of Israel. But it's condemning the wicked and the wicked Israelites in bed with them, followed by the other nations. So they're angry, they're scared. The Bible says great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Saw who? Those that are exhibiting this light of the glorious gospel, prophesying and believing in the doctrine. <clears throat> For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. So the wicked is being brought to imposters, culprits, the villain, the antagonist, the wicked, that is going to be burned to stubble. So that's not a good feeling to be marked by the Most High through his prophets, a wounded spirit who can bear. So now many are looking for an outlet to relieve themselves of this mental and spiritual anguish of being condemned by a spiritual book. <clears throat> The Bible says many of them shall seek to please the poor. But really, these efforts are in vain because prophecy must go forth. Judgments. <clears throat> but for the terrible one is brought to naught and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for iniquity are cut off that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. <laughs> so for bringing correction to the gates of the nobles. This links up with Isaiah 13, 1 and 2. So the gates of the nobles, the wicked global elite, are being highlighted and rebuked in the open. They're being stoned. Remember, the word is likened unto a rock that breaketh the hammer in pieces. So they're being publicly and openly rebuked by the word, and they don't like it. So now this is hate speech. Reading the Bible out loud is demonstrating disorderly conduct in public, if you will. It's breaking the law now. 
See? Brother, um, yeah. Brother Gamar Adama, Surat 25 and 13. Surat 25 and 13. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. So mental anguish leads to depression, leads to being deep feelings of despair, feeling defeated, feeling broken, to just feel broken, hopeless. That's what this word does. If you're on the wrong side of righteousness and justice, and then the Lord will give you a wicked woman at your side if you're coming against this doctrine. Men, he'll send you this Eve that's, when you see her, you, you just get stunned. You can't even think clearly. Can't even complete a sentence. I mean, so that movie Life, when he was at the bar, Martin Lawrence, what's your name? He just looked at him and was like, he'll send you an Eve like that. And finally, he takes a double shot of a bourbon Oh, Claude, my name is Claude. <laughs> well, that woman was wicked. So the Lord is sick Eve on you, Jake. If you're coming against this doctrine to bug you out. But the bottom line is mental anguish or, or a uh, plague of the mind, the heart. It just leads to a downward spiral where you can't even function. Yeah, Isaiah 13 and 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. So this is talking about that high mountain is the camp bedrock, the daughter of Babylon. This can connect beautifully with Jeremiah 51 and 25. He's going to burn this mountain. That mountain represents a government. That's why you have um, summit meetings. You'll have what's called a, a summit meeting where the high-ranking leaders <coughs> of these governments will come together and meet. So this doctrine has reached the international global elite, and they're not happy. They're angry. Who are these people calling us imposters? Who are these chocolate-covered individuals that are accusing us to be phonies, fakes? Who are these people claiming to be the sons and daughters of the living God, Yahweh? Let's stop this doctrine. Let's ban it. Let's make it illegal. <laughs> So these decrees are coming from those that are not even elected leaders. What in the world does the World Economic Forum have to do with U.S. national sovereignty? Because they have erased the lines and boundaries of national sovereignty under a global order, the NWO. <clears throat> Amos 5 and 10. Amos 5 and 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. So the Israelites are hated for speaking the words of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, talking about judgment coming to the international bankers, the rebellious house of Israel. Wicked men that don't want to lead or teach, that don't want to cry aloud, spare not, and rebuke, which is a demonstration of love. Women that only submit to their slave masters at the workplace or their co-workers, but not to their husband. The Lord sees you. So the claim to be unborn again, but to be wicked and rebellious is practicing hypocrisy. <clears throat> If we're born again, then the word sounds like music to our ears. A new, calmly, and delicate song. A sweet melody. But if we're fighting against the scriptures tooth and nail and clawing at it, then we're not born again. 1 Peter 5 and 8 
Brother Hebrews 4 and 12. In the NLT, 1 Peter 5 and 8. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Beautiful. So he's using minions, hired foreign fighters, military age men. He's using a corrupt police force. <coughs> he's using the law. Let the law be our power or strength. That's in Wisdom of Solomon 2, 1 Peter 5 and 9. In an NLT, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering you are. So the, the real Christians are the Israelites. And really that starts with the elect, the followers of the Hamashiach, the anointed one. <clears throat> For the basic wisdom, Isaiah 33 and 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So our strength is the word. So we're swinging a sword and it hurts. Why do you think we're seeing a global decrees come down? Censoring the internet. How many remember that decree? There was a decree that went forth. 180,000 cyber warfare warriors were hired. They've increased that number now. It was a global cyber warfare task force. You can't tell me the sword, this word is not a sword that swings both ways, that cuts deep through the bones and marrow. Dark sayings for the innermost parts or components of our mind. It penetrates the soul deep. So the wicked have been cut down through the white meat. Scared terrified, hurt. <coughs> yep, Isaiah 10 and 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Pre-written unrighteous laws. Now reading the Bible out loud, that's disorderly conduct or inciting violence publicly. You see, that's stirring up insurrection, which really they're going to, this is all leading to that big charge, treason against the government. That's coming. You got these Edomites showing up wearing suits and ties, knocking on your door. We see that you've been clicking on a series of videos that call us the devil. <laughs> <laughs> we see you've even clicked like a few times. We have all this documented. You've been clicking like videos. Matter of fact, our records indicate that you've shared some of these preposterous videos. You see, this is preposterous. You know how Edomites talk. This is absurd. This is absurd. Preposterous. We have it on record right here. Well, that's coming. You see, this is absurd. This man is the devil. He'll use these fancy little words, you know. <clears throat> How dare you? Well, the Lord gave the word, you red dragons. You see, <clears throat> for the basic wisdom, Job 14 and 5, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So this man is reaching the limits of advance of his kingdom. He can no longer expand anymore in time or territory, his colonization. Look up what they call divine providence. Divine providence, when they expanded west from the east coast, they said that God was with them, and really, the Most High gave them the kingdom. Read Job 9 and 24. 
Look up manifest destiny followed by divine providence. That they said God was with them. Even Christopher killing Columbus. God was with them when they came out towards the Americas. And really they were right. I had to give it to them. But they're coming to the end of that reign of terror of Edom. The colonizers. See? So they're getting ready to expire. And a lot of our women that look up to this man because of his positions, his power, all of that is getting ready to change. In one day, in one hour. So a famine of the word is being ushered in. Let's close out there. So remember the, the word is likened unto bread, water, wine, oil. Remember what David said, thou preparest a table in the presence of my enemies. So we're feasting and mocking our enemies and they're not happy. Are we sitting here chewing on this doctrine and, and relaxing, drinking wine in front of their face and they cannot partake in it. So they're getting angry, a red face from anger. So a famine is being ushered in. Let's get that. Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Yep, that's this word, this doctrine. So they're using the laws to curtail these channels or fountains of living water. It's not by accident, YouTube channels, channeling the doctrinal waters of life. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and from to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. We're entering into that time now. But remember, when the Most High pulls his word back, that is an indicator that judgment is getting ready to go forth. Remember Gog, Magog, Russia, that's aligned with Iran, have made ready their nuclear capable units. Why would you make ready your nuclear capable units? And I want to thank the beloved brother through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai for bringing out some of the names of these new Russian missiles like the Zircon, these new advanced missiles that can reach the shores of America, the daughter of Babylon, in about 25 minutes. But that's without the submarine. With a nuclear-capable submarine, we're talking 7 to 15 minutes, depending on how far off the, um, e off the East Coast or the West Coast they are. China is more than likely going to take the Pacific Rim, on Western coast with their nuclear capable submarines. More than likely Russia, <laughs> Russia and its allies might take off the Eastern coast or the Atlantic Ocean with its nuclear capable launch systems. You see, with these new missiles, we're talking under 30 minutes. How many can prepare in, in that amount of time? Here it is, you stuck in traffic. Cars won't go nowhere, especially in the D.C. area. You see? Or you, 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 you're you away from your vehicle. You're, you're out grocery shopping somewhere. God forbid you're at a beach or you're in a shower or you're in the bathroom. I'm not going to get too graphic. All of a sudden, you hear the big loud voice. Nuclear threat. Alert. Alert. Woo, 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 woo. Bum, bum, bum. What are you going to do? So it's time to repent yesterday and be washed by the word. A famine is coming. And when the word dries up, that means a fire is getting ready to be ignited. <clears throat> Judgments. Why do you think Russia has already made ready its nuclear forces? But they're going to bring forth or mandate the digital device first. And that's going to be a major trigger 
for the most high to push a button. Push a button. All right? Mandating this digital device and coming in against his crown jewels. Sovereign territory, the elect. All right? And then they're going to push a damn button. Thinking of that movie Rush Hour. So anyway, restrictions are coming, which means judgment is near. Let me check something real quick. One moment. Pulling something up again. <clears throat> I went back into this bill here. <clears throat> Canadian Bill C-367. Wow, it's also an anti-SIM bill. You know what I'm talking about. It's an anti-SIM bill. So if you're against those that are calling themselves the children of the Lord or the sons of God, then you're going off according to this new bill and can be charged or fined under criminal penalties. Yeah, I just pulled up the bill itself. <clears throat> it's called an anti-hate bill and an anti-SIM bill. I just caught that. To eliminate as a defense against the willful promotion of hatred or anti-SIM, the fact that a person in good faith expressed or attempted to establish an argument, an opinion, or a religious subject or an opinion based on a belief in religious texts. <laughs> you can't make this up. Penalties include an argument or an opinion based on religious subjects or an opinion based on a belief in religious texts. See, so the man of sin is being revealed and is coming out swinging Edom, Rome, which starts with the top of the proverbial pyramid, Amalek. Okay, Amalek. Well, this is not an opinion of a religious. Somebody post that, please. That the scriptures are not based on private interpretation. I think it's 2 Peter 1. If somebody can post it for edification's sake. This is not our opinion. Once I learn how to spell, I'll pull it up. Yeah, it's 2 Peter 1. Let's get 19 and 20. Bubba <laughs> Yeah, 2 Peter 1, 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So the word is emanating light, wisdom in the valley of the shadow of death, the valley of the dry bones of America, the valley of darkness, gross darkness, and it hurts the eyes of the blind, the wicked, the rebels, the naysayers, the murmurers, the backbiters, the gainsayers. You know, have you ever seen a police light? And when I was a teenager, I had to shine into my eyes because I was out doing wickedness as a teenager. And a police light, when it shines in your eyes, you're like, okay, all right, stop. All right, all right, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. You blink and you can't see. You get temporary blindness. And, you know, a lot of times they'll use it in a house raid where they blind you and then they take you down or they'll throw in a concussion grenade. But anyway, 
This light is, is uncomfortable. It's blinding the eyes of the land of gross darkness, wickedness, rebels. You see, <coughs> Lady Liberty, do what thou wilt, which is a satanic motto, a satanic doctrine. See, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. So we're not just making stuff up, okay? So this crime bill is really, it's really misleading, and it's, it's not really targeting its intended audience, if you will, because it's deceptive. You can't come against the word. The, Bi the Bible says we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So the more you come against it, that's going to help wake up those that are going to wake up in the final hour. Wait a minute. If there's an international global effort against this Bible, then maybe I need to repent. What is causing a global stir to ban something? You know how it is. When you're told you can't have something, it goes up in value. They learned that during the um, alcohol prohibition. Al Capone became filthy rich. If you want to make something spread like wildfire, try to ban it or make it illegal or criminal. Okay? It's going to spread like wildfire. So the Bible says we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Try to throw war or water. <laughs> Try to throw water on an oil fire. It just spreads. Anyway. Yep. Isaiah 60 and 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So this doctrine is shining through the Lord's men, followed by the remnant of the hopeful elect of men, women, and children. And it cannot be hidden. So it's on the world stage, if you will. So that fame and glory is starting now. But it's going to escalate when the Most High changes his elect. But we got to remember that that fame and glory is starting now. The bright light is shining on the world stage of the stars of heaven, the most high stars, his elect. In gross darkness, the daughter of Babylon, America, followed by the shadow of the world under the wicked global elite. Isaiah 60 and 2, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So you cannot hide pure wisdom, identifying who took over the world, pursuant to Job 9 and 24. Romans, Amalekites, Edomites, who was ruling in wickedness, that man of sin. Romans, Amalekites, Edomites, who are the Lord's people that was prophesied to go into bondage or Egypt with ships, the so-called Negroes, Native Americans and Latinos, who would wake up in the last days and realize their nationality in that place where it was said, ye are not my people there. It shall be said unto thee, ye are the sons of the living God. The so-called Negroes, Native Americans, Latinos, the Israelites, so you cannot gainsay prophecy. So now the elect can see. Let's close out here for the basic wisdom. Yep, Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light show, Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. I like that, and I'm glad you posted it.
that individual that comes on uh, your your comment board, Brother uh, Gabar Dama, I've had to correct him several times. No works, but he makes a lot of off-the-wall, bizarre statements on the comment board. That dude, is something is off with him. You know, but I'm very patient, and I've tried not to publicly get him. But now that he's on your comment board, he's getting ready to get a rebuke video. But he's been on my page for about three years. And that's usually the mark where I, I come out and do an open public rebuke. That three-year mark, that individual. But anyway, that scripture proves that if you're amongst the elect, you cannot be hidden. Let me say that again. If you're amongst the elect, you cannot be hidden because the elect is going to be constantly teaching, edifying, sharing the word. You're not going to go a day without at least listening to videos, at least, minimum. And the elect men are teaching, edifying, and going out to the streets. That's what Yahweh was talking about. <coughs> Let your light show, so shine through your works. So you cannot hide a shining stone. The stars are the most high. You see? Can't hide it. Because it glows with wisdom and light. In a land of gross darkness, it's obvious right now, pretty much, who the elect is. The wicked global elite, rest assure you, they know. They know. <clears throat> Hopefully this lesson has been edifying on praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Yeah, Lord willing, or Adawan Ratazah, were a part of the Lord's elect. Lord willing. Okay? The more humble approach is at the end of the day, it's up to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. There was a scripture that, I think it's John 6, even them that believe. Yep. John 6 and 20. John 6 and 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Yahweh answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that ye believe in him whom he hath sent. So you also have women and children of the elect following this doctrine. But the men are leading from the front, girding up their loins like a man. That's the, that's the garment, the garment of praise. That's that garment. You see, exhibiting the works of a faithful follower. <clears throat> Man, I am through. My body is falling apart. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. By Hashem, Kadash. Double line of respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And to the beloved of the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. And to the beloved ladies of the house of David. Listening and learning in meekness and humility as the scriptures have commanded to do so. To you we say, Barakatham, bless you all, and Shalom, peace be unto you. Pan Yasharala, arise Israel, rise. So we cannot defeat Bible prophecy as we're seeing things unfold. <laughs> How do you argue against what's matched against what was foretold in the scriptures? Or told in the scriptures by who? By the spirit and power of the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, through the angel of the Lord that goes before the camp of the elect of Israel, Yahweh Shai. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom. Shalom. And the bad, the bar, shalom.